Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be Risky Woods for the Sega Genesis. This is a side-scrolling uh, action platformer uh, in the vein of classics like Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts. A bit of a run and gun uh, with platforming elements, if you will. It's a really fun game. It originally came out on the Amiga uh, and it was also available on MS-DOS. Uh, the original computer versions actually feature uh, some different elements, like they have a shop element, uh, they, your character looks a little bit different and whatnot, uh, but level design and whatnot, from what I understand, is actually quite similar between those and this Sega Genesis version here. Uh, this is not a terribly difficult game. If you have a hard time with stuff like Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts, uh, you might want to give this a try. It's very similar gameplay. Uh, very fun, but not nearly as challenging, and uh, you'll see why once we uh, get into things here. This, so this is actually the attract mode, the game is actually playing itself for me. Uh, but yeah, before we uh, get into this game, as usual, I want to give a big shout out to my current Patreon backers. So they're going to go ahead and flash by the screen. Likewise, with our recent live stream super chatters. So thank you guys for your direct patronage to my channel. And uh, so this playthrough here probably shouldn't take us that long. I'm guessing maybe 20 minutes or so, uh, because it is a relatively fast game. Uh, you have 12 stages. Uh, four of those stages are boss fights. So I think you basically only have eight normal stages in the game, and they're not terribly long, especially in the early parts of the game. Um, but yeah, it should still give us plenty of time to explain the mechanics and whatnot and what's going on here. And uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and hit that start button and jump into things. Uh, this is actually one of those games I did a Let's Play of in the past, but that was before I got my Frame Meister, my OSSC. Um, so we basically have better video quality now, uh, hence we're redoing this Let's Play. Also, I learned a few new things about this game that I'll try to explain as we go through it again. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Like Ghouls and Ghosts or Ghosts and Goblins, you've got a map screen, although it's not quite as clear-cut as uh, those classics. But yeah, so we're into the game now. You can press the B button to jump. What's actually kind of nice about this game is that you can actually just tap the, the B button and do a, a light baby jump. Uh, so the the longer you hold the button, the, the higher you go. So it's something really good to keep in mind in this game. One thing you'll see me doing a lot is doing little baby jumps and then moving forward slowly like this. Uh, so I can move and shoot at the same time. Uh, that's something you can't really do in Ghouls and Ghosts without just doing a full jump. Uh, but in this, you can do baby jumps and still ki kill enemies that are, you know, stuck on the ground and not in the air. So that's quite nice. So what I'm doing here is grinding out on enemies to get coins. And this is one of the big differences from the computer version. So the computer versions of Risky Woods, you get coins, but you use them to buy stuff in a shop. Uh, there is no shop mechanic in this version of the game. What you do is you want to get 33 coins and you'll basically turn into a guy with silver armor. You'll get silver armor. Um, and that raises your defense significantly. Uh, and then when you get, I think it's 66 coins or it's 70 coins or something like that, you'll get gold armor. And if you can get the gold armor, I mean, you might as well be invincible. It raises your defense so much, you're basically unstoppable. Uh, so that is going to be our goal. Our goal is going to get some, some good armor and then stick with that for hopefully the rest of the game. So now uh, for those of you guys having trouble with this game, just stick around, grind out in the beginning. There we go. We got our silver armor. Every time you take hits, you do lose some coins. Uh, but So I try to get a few extra coins as well. Uh, that way, if we do take a hit, we don't lose our armor right away. If you go below 33 coins, you will lose your armor. Uh, notice that you are timed, though, and there are some power-ups here. One is a uh, uh, an hourglass. Another is an apple. Uh, you don't want to touch these arrows pointing to the left. They will actually send you backwards. Uh, now, what's actually kind of interesting is some of the uh, power-ups in this game are risky. Um, hence, I don't know if that was why they called this game Risky Woods, but some of the power-ups are kind of a risk to get. Um, like the apples will actually put you asleep and it'll basically suck up a lot of time. You need to pick up these wheels here as well. Uh, there's a slight puzzle element here. Uh, also, these crosses give you some points. These skulls make you lose health, but they give you a really powerful power-up that we're going to use uh, on the final boss, hopefully. Hopefully, we're going to make the final boss uh, just a cakewalk. If you step on these platforms, these big boulders drop, so you really want to step on them and then jump off immediately. Otherwise, you will end up uh, taking some damage. So let's go ahead and hit that apple. So we actually fell asleep with the apple, uh, unfortunately. But what happens with the apple is you get health back. And what's kind of cool is if your health goes over the maximum health that you have, you actually go, you get an extra life. 
Uh, and what's happening here with this is when you reach these, uh, basically these dead ends or these, these statues, uh, what needs to happen is you have to hold down the C button and this wheel that you pick up, uh, you launch it into that statue and then you have to play a little game of Simon. Um, where you have to basically repeat the motions that, uh, the statue, uh, demonstrates. And I'll sort of try to explain that again once we get to it. But I was actually kind of running out of time there, so I didn't want to spend too much time explaining it. Uh, so we've got the dagger weapon. There are multiple weapons in the game. You've got this flame you can shoot across the screen. You've got an axe. Uh, you've got a little bit of, um, not really a throwing mace, but uh, another object you can throw. So let's go ahead and hold down the C button. It goes down, up, right. So all you do is you hold C, press down, up, right to uh, replicate it. And then that's it. And then uh, you're free to progress on to the next section. Uh, but what we're going to do here is we're going to try to stick with the dagger for most of the game. Uh, because I've already upgraded it once. If you pick up the same weapon a second time and then a third time, uh, you'll actually increase the strength of that weapon. You'll notice that the weapon will start cutting through multiple enemies uh, at once. And so to make this game a lot easier on yourself, it's highly recommended that you uh, you stick with one weapon. You don't switch weapons around. Otherwise, you'll end up with a, a very weak weapon that just isn't doing that much damage. Uh, so we actually need to come up here to get that wheel again. So there's another one. We've got a full wheel now. Once you've got a full wheel, you can uh, you can go and you can play the game of Simon. So up, down, right, up, up, down, right, up. And as the game progresses... So as the game progresses, uh, you know, that game of Simon Says will basically end up taking longer and longer and longer. So by the time you get to the end of the game, uh, it takes a lot of steps to get through those little little memorization games, little games of Simon. And so, in these stages, you also have these monks that are basically stoned, and you need to release them by busting open their statues. And one thing I can do here, too, if I really want to, is grind out on some more enemies for coins. So enemies are just constantly respawning in this game, uh, especially as you scroll the screen left and right. And we can try to get our gold armor if we want. We're actually really close. There we go. Okay, so it actually looks like it's either 60... Yeah, I think it's 66 for your gold armor. So it's basically 33 for silver, uh, 66 for gold. And once you get the gold armor, as long as you can keep the coins, like I said, you're, you're basically unstoppable. Unless you're just getting extremely reckless, falling down pits left and right, uh, picking up bad power-ups that drop your health. Uh, and here's a little guy here. This, uh... Gives you what I think is a continue? No, it actually gives you an extra life. I'm actually confusing it with the uh, the computer versions of the game, where you can earn continues and whatnot. Um, I actually don't remember if you can continue in this game or not, because I haven't actually gotten a game over uh, since I've been practicing this game again. There's the arrow again. We don't want to hit that. We'll get sent back, and then we'll end up losing a lot of time as a result. You've got these question bags here, which are always money bags. And whenever you hit them, you will actually get uh, a lot of points and whatnot. And uh, this fireball here we've got will actually home in on enemies, which is quite nice. This is just a random power-up drop. And actually, I don't know if it's random. I think the treasure chests in this game are actually uh, the same every time you access them. So, something good to keep in mind when you're playing this game. So, right, right, down, left. And there's another uh, dagger. And these guys right here, these are potions. They actually give you some health back. And again, when your health goes over your maximum, you go up to the next life count. So we went from five lives to six. Now, there is a, a bit of a, a negative aspect to that. And I don't want to get those apples because I'm so low on time right now. Uh, the apples will... The apples don't seem to have a lot of rhythm or rhyme to them. Some apples will put you to sleep. You'll get health back, but you'll lose about 30 plus seconds of time. Um, but other apples will just give you like 10,000 points or so. So, you know, picking up the apples is something that I don't always go for. Like, I have to see how much time I have before I pick up the apple. Um, but if you can pick up as many apples as you can and still have a lot of time left over, you'll, you'll gain more, you'll gain a lot of lives over the course of the game. So we're at six lives right now, so we've already gained like three or four lives, uh, which is fantastic. So, yeah, this is our stage three. This is the boss fight. And we're just going to go ahead and pummel him with knives. Our knife is uh, powered up quite a bit, and so we should be able to wreck through this guy pretty easy. This is a pretty easy boss. Uh, his projectiles are short range, so you don't really have to do much intricate dodging or anything like that. 
And then if you're low on coins, uh, the boss fights will pretty much get you to your silver armor or your gold armor, depending on where you are. And there are always some treasure chests here. Even if you don't need the coins, you can you can shoot these bags for extra points. So if you're trying to play for high score or something like that, you can just pummel those bags. Uh, hitting coins or getting coins themselves don't give you any points. But shooting the chests in the bags that those coins are in uh, will give you points. That's something to keep in mind if you're playing for score. Alright, so from here on out, we should actually be progressing pretty smoothly. We, we've actually got a really good setup here. And let's go ahead and grab this apple, try to get some health back. And I want this uh, skull as well. So the skulls will actually deplete your health a little bit. But they give you these canes that you can unleash for like a screen clearing bomb style attack. And it's very powerful. It works against bosses. And to activate that, you just hold down the A button. Now you have to make sure you don't hold down the A button randomly as you're playing the game. This is something that I do by accident. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, just like that. Um, there's another dagger. So our dagger is probably maxed out on power, so it's extremely powerful. And I just want to keep this if I can. Now, there are a couple of weird sections in the game where when you do the game of Simon, um, it will force you to duck, and any power-ups that land on you while you're being forced to duck, uh, your character will collect them, because that's how you collect items. Ducking is how you collect items. And these guys right here can be a little tricky to deal with, but you just want to run back and turn around and attack them as quickly as possible. But yeah, this game overall, it's, it's a really fun game. If you like Ghouls and Ghosts style games, uh, I definitely recommend checking this out. Um, it's, again, not anywhere near as difficult to, you know, if you like the style of gameplay of Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts, but you don't like the difficulty, uh, this is definitely a game to check out. And it might even prep you for, for those games. Uh, there are some elements in this that allow the game to play a little bit, I don't want to say smoother, but not as rigid, like you don't have to commit to jumps in this game. Notice how I can control my jumps in mid-air. Uh, if you jump forward in a, a Ghosts and Goblins or Ghouls and Ghosts game, you have to commit to that jump, like Castlevania or something like that. One, two, three, four, just like that. And these are health potions right here, so very nice. We're up to eight lives. Now, you know, boosting your lives by uh, getting extra health is kind of a double-edged sword because while we have eight lives, notice that our health bar is at the minimum now. So if we take a couple hits, we're going to die and uh, basically, you know, our power-ups will degrade when that happens. We'll end up becoming weaker and so the game will become harder. So there's a little bit of risk versus reward in, uh, you know, constantly trying to upgrade your, uh, your lives by picking up lots of health power-ups and whatnot. So that's something you have to keep in mind when you're, uh, when you're picking up health power-ups. You need to look at your life bar and see where it's going to take you. So this, uh, this gold wheel up there, we're going to actually get teleported back. We have to find the, uh, the uh, statue at the end, and then that'll allow us to get uh, up there. It'll basically send us back to where that wheel is. And uh, I kind of messed up there. I actually fell down the pit, unfortunately. We're losing time. We're losing a lot of time. Wow, that was really weird. It's like the game glitched out there. That was that was super weird. But it actually put us on the... Uh, it put us right in front of the wheel, which was actually very nice. So thank you for doing that game. Not a, not a fan of games glitching out like that, but uh, that was actually seemed like a beneficial malfunction, as we, as we call it in pinball. Uh, basically a glitch that pays out, you know, pays off in your favor. There we go, and let's see, that's fire. We don't want fire, but I want to open up this statue here. Now, apparently in some versions of this game, you can tell whether this is a good monk or a bad monk um, by how the statue looks, and I haven't really quite figured that part out yet in this version. Um, so I just shoot all the statues that I can. And the monks that you uh, you need to find are denoted in the bottom portion of the screen. So you see three monks down there. That means that we need to find three of them. And we're actually taking a lot of hits. So what I need to do is start picking up these uh, these coins again. Otherwise, we're going to run out of our gold armor here. Our gold armor is just crazy. Like, we st we've had one life pellet for a very long time. And I've taken a lot of hits, yet we're still alive. I don't know how we're still alive, but we are. So that's why you want to get your gold armor uh, when you play this game. Gold armor is a must. And let's go ahead and use this.
And I don't want to duck on that weapon, otherwise we'll end up picking it up. So what happens in this game is when you upgrade a very specific weapon, if you if you if you select to a different weapon, uh, you will actually downgrade. Uh, so yeah, you'll switch weapons. You might want an axe because the axe has a better arc or something like that. Uh, but what can happen is, um, you know, your weapon will end up being weaker. So you might have a better arc, but your weapon won't be cutting through multiple enemies. And you really do not want to have a level one weapon at a boss fight. Boss fights can actually be really difficult if you're not powered up correctly when you get to them. So this should be our next boss fight here. And this is actually probably one of the trickier bosses in the game because uh, he's got these little these little bug shields around him and as you hit them they'll start rolling across the screen and you don't want to hit too many back to back otherwise this happens and it's very difficult to actually avoid them and avoid taking damage. So what's kind of nice to do sometimes is to just take your time and attack one or two at a time. And then if you if you get an opening like this, you can actually just hit the boss and just tackle him that way. And unfortunately, we're taking a lot of hits now. But we've got that gold armor. So the gold armor, just like, you might even be invincible. Or like the damage scaling with gold armor is just so great that... Um, it takes a lot of hits to actually lose some health. That's kind of interesting. It's actually really interesting. And it's one of the one of the reasons why this game is so much easier than uh, Ghouls and Ghosts and whatnot. You just the power-ups really stack in your favor. And something I noticed when I was playing this the other day is that occasionally, you know, on these boss arenas, your shots will actually hit random objects in the air that don't exist, but you'll get points for them. So I don't know if that's a glitch, but if you're playing for score, like, you might actually be able to, to milk that. So look at that, I'm just getting a bunch of random points. And actually, I don't know if it's worth it, because you might actually get more time- you might get more points for just letting your time tick down and collect those as points. It's hard to say, I'd have to look at that further. So, alright, we're on stage 7, so only uh, five more stages to go. Let's go ahead and grab that, because again, that's a homing fireball. And there's a soda, and there's an apple. And the apple actually did not give us any health back, because what ended up happening, I picked up both the apple and the arrow at the same time. And it looks like the arrow actually takes priority over the apple. And so what I wanted to do was hit the apple, fall asleep, and uh, get some health back. And there we go, got my wish. So we lost time, but look, now I'm in the yellow on my health bar. So we're good on health. And we're gonna go ahead and just keep jumping and shooting. Just jump and shoot. That way you can make progress and kill enemies at the same time. And this is some more health right here. And we're gonna go ahead and skip all those weapons. I don't really want them. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with my dagger. If it wasn't so hard to survive with the level 1 weapon on the later parts of the game, uh, I would experiment with different weapons so you guys can see what they're like, but I also don't want to just be getting random game overs. Uh, these red potions here actually give you some health back. So let's go ahead and do this. And there's some more health right here. So these, these monks, when you free them, again, your character will duck as well. And when that happens, you'll actually end up picking up any items that you're standing on. So you really need, need to make sure that you're not standing on, uh, you know, any items like that. Let's go ahead and grab this. We ended up getting some points for it, so we didn't fall asleep, which is good. Now that lightning bolt that you pick up, that power-up actually, uh, you know, causes a shield around you. And unfortunately, I ended up just, uh, using my special weapon, the- the cane, which I did not want to do, because I ended up holding the button a little bit too long. And this is a little tricky right here. These guys that shoot fireballs can be a pain to deal with. But again, we've got gold armor, so not a huge deal. There we go. And, uh, no health. And let's go ahead and do that. 
And there we go. So that, it's actually kind of interesting. A chest appears up there, but there's really no way to get back up to it. Uh, so I'm not sure really what the deal is with that that specific chest. I haven't been able to get back up to it and, and grab it, grab its contents. And I should probably keep picking up these coins to make sure that we don't lose our gold armor. But yeah, I mean, just look at how easy this game is when you get powered up. Uh, it's just a very, very, uh, kind of a relaxing game, really. It's not that challenging. Uh, but it is a fairly good sounding game. I like the music in this title. Um, I really enjoy the graphics. I've always enjoyed this Amiga style of visuals. And what I really enjoy about this game is that it's an Amiga style, uh, it's an Amiga art style. It's an art style you found very frequently on the Amiga. But it's got the gameplay more of like a Japanese developed arcade game. Which is, gameplay wise, is what I prefer. There we go. And uh, it just, it's a lot of fun to play. It's not too stressful. Uh, it looks and sounds great, and it's just it's just a good little package overall, you know? It's not going to challenge you like Ghouls and Ghosts, so I don't think it's got the, the same kind of longevity as something like Ghouls and Ghosts. But, it is uh, definitely a well-made game that is a lot of fun to play. So what I'm going to do is wait, there's an arrow behind that wheel, I need to make sure that arrow disappears. It takes a while for the power-ups to time out and disappear, but there we go. So I absolutely need to have both wheels, otherwise I'll get sent back farther. And let's go ahead, left, up, down, left, right, uh... There we go. Alright, so I need to go back up. We've got almost three minutes left on the, on the clock. I'm actually kind of ripping right through this, which is nice. I'm doing pretty... It's a pretty solid run so far, actually. Um... Let's go ahead and just land on that platform. Fortunately, even if you take a hit mid-air, you can still control your 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 movement a little bit. And oops, so we're actually missing a wheel. I missed one. Oh, it's right. I always forget. It's right behind that uh, that monk. So what I want to do is destroy that monk. I just wanted to make sure there weren't any other power-ups there. Oh, he's back. That might actually be. One of the, that's one of the bad monks. So you can actually tell it's a bad monk after you destroy it. Uh, because flames will appear and you'll get hurt by the flames. And we missed that health. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. We've got full health right now. So we're okay. We've got uh, the maximum amount of lives, which is 9. And we've got the maximum amount of health as well, which is great. Unfortunately, we only have two skulls, so we're not going to wreck the final boss as quickly as I want to, but we'll still wreck him pretty quickly, assume we don't have any trouble with the, uh, the final stage. So this is actually one of the trickier bosses in the game. He shoots these flames across the ground, and you have to jump really, really early. The hitbox on this the set of flames is really, really weird. So jump early, just like that. So, you know, the first three bosses in this game basically like to corner you on the left-hand side of the screen. But as you get close to them, they'll just move to the right-hand side. And that's kind of what you want to do. If you get too close to the left-hand side of the screen, they will corner you. You will take a lot of hits. So, something to keep in mind, especially if you don't have the gold armor. And there we go. We just took a hit. Go ahead and get those coins. And it looks like you could still milk this guy for points, too. Actually, it looks like I'm not actually hitting the boss. I am hitting, uh... Oh, am I hitting the boss? Yeah, no, it's counting as hits on the boss. So just some extra points there. Not really worth it, it seems. But it's worth hitting these bags. You will get some good points for hitting the bags. There we go, just like that. Alright, so on to our last stretch of the game. So we're in this castle at the end, and then we'll go into the basement and fight the final boss. Uh, the only thing about this game is that it isn't very long. I, I do wish there was more to the game. I wish there were more levels. I wish it, it got a little more challenging. But again, it is a pretty smooth run. Pretty smooth ride. Uh, overall, that is just kind of fun to play. And this is where, like, the, the little Simon uh, minigames 
uh, start taking a little bit longer, and they're a little bit trickier to get through. So there was also an arrow sitting behind that wheel. You have to watch out for that. Power-ups can ap appear behind the wheels. Uh, the wheels always take uh, precedent over power-ups, so the wheel can cover up power-ups. You might end up picking up something you don't want. There we go. Ooh, I hit, uh, apparently there's a monk up there. I, I triggered some kind of monk, which, which caused the explosion to happen, and I bas when that happens, you sort of get pulled back down to the ground, and I was just right over a pit when it happened. So that was kind of weird. And let's go ahead and pick that up. I'm not going to bother with the apple, because I've got max health. But we actually are taking a lot of hits. We actually ended up losing a lot of coins as well. And we ended up falling asleep there. Fortunately, when you fall asleep, you know, again, you do get health back. But a shield also appears around you. Uh, so enemies that touch you when you're asleep uh, will actually die. Which is good. So, you know, when you are asleep, you won't take any extra damage. But you do lose a lot of time. So those little, like, eyeball orb-looking things seem to give you 50,000 points. That's a lot of points in this game. Actually, quite a lot of points. Alright. Is there another chest up here? Yep. Another skull, very nice. And I got the lightning, lightning bolt, so I basically have a shield. And we can just cut right through these enemies if we want. There's another one of those. Now, one thing you don't want to do is press the C button again as those statues are being destroyed and falling off screen. If you do, it'll make you play the minigame again, so you have to watch out for that. Um, that's actually something that can happen very frequently if you're, if you're just trigger happy on that C button. And it'll be halfway off the screen too, so it'll be hard to see the directions that it's, it's asking you to do. But yeah, this is our last real stage, then we go to the final boss, and then we're pretty much done with the Let's Play. Uh, so actually, you know, it was, it was more than 20 minutes. We're at the 30-minute mark right now, so... Uh, it's not exactly a 20-minute Let's Play. But, uh, it's still relatively short. It's not a super long game, uh, especially if you have a decent run, uh, like we've had today. We've actually had... oops! Quite a decent run, actually. This is probably better than my original run that I did years ago on YouTube, so I'm pretty happy with that. And, uh, let's see, let's see if we can get back up here. Apparently I can't, and I'm taking a lot of hits, unfortunately. So I should have hit that guy from down below. Yeah, it looks like that was one of the correct guys. So when it's one of the correct monks, uh, you'll actually, you'll be forced to duck. Uh, you won't be able to move around freely, whereas with the bad monks, uh, you will be able to move around freely. And a health potion, very nice. So we're actually getting those Simon games on our first try, uh, which is actually fantastic. And I'd really like to get some more coins. I'd really like to have gold armor going into the final boss. But, you know, we can also end up running out of time on this last stage, which isn't good. But we're cutting through multiple enemies now, so we have to do a whole lot less work when it comes to grinding out for coins, which is nice. There we go, gold armor. And we only need one more monk. So I don't think this level is going to be that much longer. And then there's a pit. Some of the pits in this game aren't exactly obvious. And we did get some more time. 
So the the little Simon mini games, a lot of times they can take a little while. If you don't get them on your first try, you could sit there for a good minute and a half trying to figure them out. Uh, unless your short-term memory is just absolutely amazing, and you you can commit everything to memory instantly. The good thing about the Simon minigames in this is that they do have the sound element, so as long as you can hear, uh, you do know when you're when you're hitting the right note. All right. Wow, very nice. Yes, yeah, so we're getting these things pretty quickly. And that was a bad monk, because we ended up being able to bounce around, and then we still took some damage. And this is our last one! So, uh, what we're gonna do is just wait for this platform to come down. We actually made really good progress on that, that final stage. Usually what happens is I end up running out of time on this part, because it takes me so long to do the Simon Says sections. But this is our final boss. We actually have four skulls, and so what I'm going to do here is use those skulls. Uh, we have to basically traverse this way over these platforms. Not platforms, but these pits. And what I'm going to do is get up here, hold down the A button, like so. Just pummel this guy, hold down the A button again. And hold down the A button again, and look at that. We just annihilated that final boss. Uh, I believe in my Let's Play, I ended up getting here with a level 1 weapon and just had a hell of a time with the final boss. Uh, whereas now I figured out a good strategy to just... just wreck him completely. Uh, with no issues at all. So that is Risky Woods, guys! That is the ending! That's all you get, unfortunately. But I actually... ended up finding something out about this game. There's apparently, uh, a cheat code you can enter. If you get your name on the high scoreboard, you type uh, E O A, apparently. So let's try that. So that's E. E O A. And now, if we go to the options menu, supposedly, uh, the sound test turns into a level select. And it looks like we are on the final stage again. So there we go. And it looks like we're actually maxed out uh, on firepower as well. Although we don't have any, uh, we don't have any skulls, unfortunately. But it, it's a level select, and uh, it gets you uh, the gold armor as well. So if you need to practice, uh, this is how you can do it. So it's kind of neat having that uh, that little cheat code. If you're having troubles with a certain boss or a level. Or if you want to practice these bosses uh, with a level 1... Well, actually, technically you can't do it with a level 1 weapon. Or I guess you could. You could kill yourself at the boss and then try to do it with a level 1 weapon. And there we go. So we just beat the game again. <laughs> so we'll, we'll let the ending roll out again. But yeah, again, guys, that's Risky Woods. And yeah, if you get your name on the high scoreboard... Uh, minimum of 10,000 points, apparently. You can type EOA as your name, and then the sound test turns into a level select. Uh, and then you can basically, uh, warp your way to any level, which is kind of cool. So, uh, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, like I said, Risky Woods is a really fun game. I do recommend checking it out. Uh, I'm not really sure what, the, what it goes for these days, price-wise, but if you got a flashcard or something like that, you can just load it right up and, uh, have a good old time with it. Also, if you're into, like, the, uh, the Commodore Amiga or MS-DOS, uh, there is an Amiga and a DOS version of the game. Uh, so you can check those out, too. You'll actually get, like, the shop element. Uh, your character will actually look a little bit different. And there are a couple of other differences as well. But, uh, at its core, it's a very similar game. Uh, but yeah, great game. Hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. If you have any questions or comments, as usual, uh, you know, post them down below. Uh, also, thanks to everyone that's supporting the channel via places like Patreon and, uh, 
Uh, yeah, so uh, if you're new to my channel, definitely consider subscribing. I've got a ton of Let's Plays here and many, many more to come. Uh, I also do weekly live streams on Thursday nights, so if you're around, feel free to pop in and say hello. Uh, for everyone else already subbed, thanks as usual for your support. If you guys like the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you hate everything about life, give it a thumbs down. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, and until the next one, take it easy.